Well, thank you so much for, uh, for having me at your conference. Uh, my name is Lady Mariam Jam. I am the founder of I Am The Code. I'm really pleased to be here. I think what, what, I, what I would like to talk to you about today is about I Am The Code and, and how did I create I Am The Code. And hopefully, um, you know, we can go through Q&As later. So I was born in Senegal, in West Africa. That's where I was born. And um, unfortunately, I didn't go to school. I didn't have access to education. And so I really struggled as a young girl um, as I grew up. I uh, had a lot of challenges growing up as a young woman. Um, and uh, I was neglected uh, by uh, my family members. And so I really struggled as a young girl. But as I grew up, and I'm now based in the United Kingdom, and as I grew up, I really wanted to find a way to, uh, you know, get myself some skills. I wanted to have a job and, and have dignity uh, and make sure that I learn the skills of tomorrow. And I was really wanted to be part of the uh, global uh, di the digital evolution. So what I've done is I start learning how to code, and I start going to my local library uh, twice a day, um, you know, for in the morning uh, and in the afternoons. So I used to do a lot of cleaning jobs and work in bars and hotels because my English was very, very bad. Uh, and then when, once I started learning English, uh, language was really important to me. Then I started familiarizing myself with the library, uh, the local library. I'm, I'm based in the southeast of England, uh, which is called Guildford. So I used to go there every day to learn uh, coding languages. So programming computers was really interesting for me. I wanted to learn about that. But you may ask me, how uh, did you start learning how to code when you didn't know how to read and write? Uh, that's a very good question. I started to uh, really look into uh, languages, Excel. So I started looking into Excel and symbols. I was very curious and very interested in learning uh, different skills. And when you are a traumatized child, when you are, when you've been through difficulty in your life, usually you try to uh, push yourself harder than anybody else because you just don't have a choice. And so I didn't have a choice. I wanted to be in an office. I wanted to un understand who I was as a person. And so going to a local library really helped me to, uh, you know, gain skills. And then in that time, we didn't have Google. We didn't have Facebook. We didn't have all the social media that exist today. Uh, and then uh, Google was just born a couple of years later. I start um, understanding about um, the power of words. I love words. Today I have a podcast. It's unbelievable that after 25 years I have a podcast. And so I start uh, really understanding what people are saying. I didn't have a very good vocabulary then, but um, storytelling and writing was really interesting for me. And I wanted to also put government into uh, accountable. I wanted to understand how come so many girls and boys across the world don't have access to education. I just wanted to understand why there's so much poverty across the world. Uh, how come we're not looking after the people the way we should look after them? And I was interested about that. Then I first my I wrote my first blog. Uh, this was addressed to uh, Bono and Bob Geldof. You may not know them, but I wrote an open letter to uh, celebrities uh, going to Africa to talk about poverty. That blog uh, became a very, very famous blog. Um, and I got... Um, called by some newspapers and asked me, you know, why do you think poverty is not ending? You know, in that time, uh, all the big celebrities were talking about Ethiopia, famine in Africa. They were talking about, uh, you know, uh, the Millennium uh, Village, uh, the, the Millennium Development Goals. They were just talking so much talk, less action. And I just, I was very angry as a young girl. I was like, you know, I want to know why these guys always talk about poverty. Uh, what can they do about this? Uh, and then that was my, 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 my angle. And then I start um, focusing in, okay, I don't have any diploma, but I'm going to make sure I learn how to code. And I gave myself two years where I learned how to code uh, seven coding languages in two years. I started with HTML, which was the basic one, and I went to CSS and JavaScript. And as I, as I get to get better, I start doing data entry for companies, and I used to get paid for that. If you are following the news today, in the UK, we have uh, over 3,000 people who have lost their job uh, or who will lose their job this week in the United Kingdom because uh, they were women work in the retail sector. They were doing fashion. 
So those women need to be reskilled. If you want to uh, get more women to, to, to be part of the global workforce, we need to get them reskilled. And so that led me to create I Am The Code, and I gave myself a purpose and a mission uh, to teach one million uh, women and girls to learn how to code uh, by the year 2030. So this is a global mission. Uh, it's now backed by 37 companies across the world, uh, and we are in a, in a big, big mission to get girls and boys all across the world to teach you to learn how to code, to build our industries. Uh, and, and I believe that this digital evolution will happen only if we include boys and girls. Gender equality is not just for women only, but also for boys, because we are leaving uh, young boys uh, behind as well. So that's what I am the code is doing. Right now, we're in 68 countries. Uh, I've taught over 25,000 girls how to code, the age between 18 and 24 years old. We also have young girls who are age um, 11 years old. So I go across the world. Before COVID-19, I was traveling across the world to teach girls how to code. Uh, you know, we, we created, uh, in partnership with many companies, a computer kit where a young girl can learn how to code literally within, um, within five minutes. So I want to show you uh, how I put the computer. So this is where, uh, if, you haven't, if you haven't seen this before, so this is called a Raspberry Pi. And so I put all of the content in here, and I teach girls across the world, uh, you know, how to code. It's a very, uh, very interesting system. It's very quick. Uh, you don't have to be wealthy. You don't have to be poor. It's for everybody. So I am the code is very inclusive. So we very focus on inclusion, and I want to rebuild inclusion because I think COVID nineteen we have just find out that you know we are all the same. You know what happened in. Uh, Turkey is going to happen in Senegal. It's the same issue we have. But what is really important is that we change the systems into our into our countries. So that's why uh, we are here today, and we are moving forward with uh, COVID 2019. And moving uh, post COVID 19, we're going to get more girls to learn how to code. We're going to have virtual digital clubs where girls can come in and learn how to code. My mission is really to make sure I educate government. Um, I educate the press, I educate, uh, you know, the businesses to start investing into young women and girls. At the end of the day, no matter what happens, women and girls are the ones that will suffer the most. I'm not saying we should not include men. Of course, a society uh, cannot be, uh, you know, developed without, uh, you know, our brothers and, and our fathers and our husbands. Of course, we need to involve them into the conversation. But we demand for our brothers, our fathers, uh, and our cousins to get involved into gender equality, to support women and girls uh, more, because they are uh, not fragile women, they are very strong women, and they're the backbone of the world economy. As you can see, COVID-19 has affected so many, many women uh, and so many, many girls. So at I Am The Code, uh, my mission is to make sure that I need to support women and girls uh, so they don't end up like I was as a young girl, not having an education, and have to fight so hard uh, to be where I am. So I want to thank you so much for inviting me to your conference. I wish you all the best. And uh, I hope that we can work together and I am the court can come to Turkey. My very best friend uh, is Turkish. She's right now in Sudan. Uh, uh, she's working with UNHCR. So I have a lot of love and respect uh, for Turkey. Thank you so much for having me. Lady uh, Mariam Jim, thank you for being with us today. It was an honor hosting you. Uh, as you mentioned in the beginning of your speech, it's always uh, shocking and a little bit uh, frustrating to see how many people are left behind or, uh, mm. you know, left out of this tech scene. And you are dealing with this issue as much as you can with the I Am The Code uh, initiative. So are you planning to d disseminate uh, your efforts and activities also in Turkey in terms of education, training, and so on? I would love to. You know, Turkey uh, is, an advanced, uh, is an advanced country when it comes to innovation. Of course, you know, we have... Um, but I would, I would not forget that, you know, that we also have 
people who are being left behind. So, you know, my organization, uh, we would like to find uh, strategic alliances and partners where we can go and, and, and really bring our methodology. I'm sure you have so many organizations in your country doing beautiful work, but we would love to partner with them. Because what is really simple about our organization is that it's not for us, it's for everyone. I am the code is a global success. If we can get girls uh, and boys in, in uh, you know, in, in Turkey to learn how to code, uh, to be part of the global evolution, uh, I think we are all going to be satisfied. And I see I am the code as a, as a movement of uh, of humanity, you know, because we have failed people. We have failed. We need to be honest about this. And COVID-19 has demonstrated that we have failed people. People are, don't trust the digital world anymore. Uh, and so we need to make sure boys and girls are involved in this conversation. So I would love to come to Turkey uh, to, to come in and, and, and really share my uh, small knowledge with uh, with people out there to see if we can all teach girls how to code, but also focus on the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals. I know your country is very, very uh, involved in this uh, since uh, 2015 at the United Nations. So if there is anything we could do to work together on climate change issues, but also making sure our institutions are stronger, I'll be extremely honored to come and work with you. Let's remind our viewers that a lot of details can be reached at uh, your site, which is at IamTheCode.org, as far as I remember, right? I Absolutely. have seen Absolutely. a long list of activities, but you have a banner up site uh, mentioning that due to COVID-19, the physical activities are now over. So I think technology is, again, once playing a bigger role in our daily lives, even in terms of learning technology. And my last question is about the digitalization process. Process. As you well aware of, COVID-19 uh, accelerated the speed of digitalization, and m maybe we, um, I think we can say that we achieved our goals f of uh, 10, 15 years in a couple of months. Uh, what do you think about the social effects? I mean, we had a fast process. I think the digital divide uh, is being felt a lot more in these days. Uh, for example, in Turkey, it is definitely an issue for education, commerce, and so on, uh, even for the workspace. How do you see it globally? What are what will be the social effects of this era? Well, the social that's a very good question. The social effect will be immense uh, because I've just seen it right now. I I'm very blessed to work in Lebanon, in Afghanistan, and in in, uh, in Kenya, in in Africa. I go and see slums and. Uh, I see places of misery, places that are really, really bad. Um, and, and sometimes you feel that you are living in, in two different worlds. Uh, you know, you think there's a, you know, there's a planet A and planet B and planet C, you know, but at the end of the day, there's only one planet. So sometimes like, you know, which planet am I living in here? Um, we can all choose. But but uh, but to be to be to be to be to be sincere, you know, we really need to start thinking about people we have left behind. And COVID nineteen, there are two things here. Uh, to be honest, we have an opportunity uh, now to learn from our past mistakes. Almost twenty years before, I've been saying this for nearly twenty five years. You know, my first ever blog has been a long time ago. You know, I, when I wrote that, remember. So I'm now forty six years old. So, you know, a, a young girl who's going to be 46 years old, uh, you know, in, a, in, a, in the next uh, two decades, you just need some uh, support. So I think one of the things we need to think about is, are we willing to invest into our people now? Because the young girls living in slums, in, in places that are hard, they are not waiting for you and for me. In Africa, especially in Turkey, in Africa, the same, we are not waiting for people to hand out uh, technology. You know, before you can go and give people aid, money and food, fine. You know, the UN can bring food into your country. But technology now, people are not waiting for you. They go on social media, they have WhatsApp and Facebook, they have all this content in their hands. As, as long as they have a device, they can have access to anything. So I think people need to start being really smart about that. And I think the second uh, component is the, you know, the we have the opportunities, but also need to really think about how we need to be more humble and how did we leave our people behind we have left people behind uh, when it comes to connectivity infrastructure uh, content uh, you know also access you know mobile phones are expensive a young girl living in a slum you know the whole the, la the last nine months i spend you know every single month i spend money uh, to young girls in different parts of the world i should not be doing this you know 
uh, their government should be taking care of them. And with COVID-19, you know, you have act, you have mobile phone, you have a network, but you don't have data. You know, so if you don't have data, you can't go to Zoom. You can't go, and people expect everyone to go on WhatsApp, on Facebook, on Zoom. First of all, it affects your mental health, but also you are not part of the conversation. The global conversation is 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 one-sided. The girls and the boys from marginalized communities are not part. We don't want to hear from them. That's why there's a lot of misinformation. But if we now, if moving forward, our roadmap to uh, 2021 need to be rebuilding inclusion. We really need to rebuild the inclusion. We need to seriously, and I want uh, your audience to understand this. We have to rebuild inclusion by by including people, by allowing people to have come and have a seat at the table. Even if we don't agree with them, but we need to also give people tools of dignity. A mobile phone is not a tool of dignity, but it does help a young woman to have an information. It does help a young boy to get, uh, you know, a course, to finish finish his course, or you know, take care of his family when he can build an app or a website. So I think the social impact is so huge, but we have left people behind. And what I'm advocating right now is for people to really understand we need to rebuild the inclusion. We cannot just carry on the way it is because we made so many mistakes over the you know, 30, 40, 50 years uh, across the world. And it's time now for us to use COVID-19 as a way to uh, pray and to say we're very humble. We will make a difference 2021 because the organizations that will invest in tech innovation in 2021 will be making it. But we don't want just people to make money in 2021 and make profit and leave people behind. We want them to call the young girls and the young boys from slums, from favelas, from places of misery. Include them. Give them scholarship. Allow them to come to the offices or even mentor them. We have a big mentoring program at IM The Code where uh, companies, global companies, are spending uh, time engaging their staff members to come and mentor our girls one hour a week. That we can that can change the change your change your life i believe mentoring is a transaction uh you know based on empathy compassion and kindness the more we support people the more we can we can we can uh, we can evolve as a society we can't just keep being just taking taking and not giving back to these people i'm a, i was a young girl i'm now a woman young girls grow up you know they just don't stay young girl forever so if you want to invest now if you invest in a 10 years old like i said in 2040, uh, she'll be 20 years old. She'll be coming working for your company. But if you don't invest in her now, don't expect her to have a job in in, in 2040. Yeah. It's just not yeah. going to happen. So that's what I'm that's yeah. what I'm calling people to do, really.